That's your shot, right? May I have a refill? Woo! One, two, three. Cheers. The hottest place to be, cheers. cheers. The hottest place to be. Cheers. I know that. Cheers. Hot tea. The hottest place to be. Hi, my name's T, and welcome to Hot Tea, the, the hottest, hottest place, place to be. be. Today I have a special guest. She is a reality TV star. She is a boss woman. And she is a baddie just all around. Give it up for Fly Teddy Sky. Yes. That's my girl. I love you. Thank I love you, you too. <laughs> Listen, we are both Virgos. <laughs> Virgo Nation. Okay. And we have each other blocked on Instagram. <laughs> And we're here. We have okay. each other's numbers. Okay. And because in real life, we are actually kicking girls. Yeah. Yeah. That's we go like out and party. Loving your lover. That's how it is. You still lay in your bed and you got them blocked. Do you remember why you blocked me? Because I remember why I blocked you. I remember <laughs> why. I remember. Tell them the tea. Oh my God, dude. Are we going way back? Why not? It wasn't even that big of a deal. It was. It's hilarious, though. Okay, it's. It was my brother's birthday. We were going to Puerto Rico for his birthday. <laughs> okay, the flights to Puerto Rico were weren't that expensive mm -hmm. at all, mm -mm, mm -mm. but they were scarce as far as first class was concerned. So to accommodate my baby T over here, um, she would have had to be have been on a first class flight for 22 hours okay that's why we were all riding in economy and when we were all riding in economy t took offense to it <laughs> <laughs> mind you we're a group it's no one better than anyone we're a group it wasn't anyone trying to like play anybody but I get it. So he said, wait, what? No, I'm not fucking riding in. <laughs> I'm not riding regular class. This is not happening. And I was just like, all right, well, if she ain't riding, she ain't riding. And it ain't riding. I just know, long story short, that I was black soon come. <laughs> and I was like, let me find this bitch page so I go black her too. <laughs> <laughs> yo, because Breeze called me, right? Our, your brother, right? Mm -hmm. So he calls me. He's like, yo, it's my birthday. We're going to Puerto Rico. La, 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 la. I'm like, okay, cool, bet. I'm like, what's the tea? What's, what's the flight situation? He's like, I got everybody's flight. We're flying economy. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, Ur. okay, hold on. Because I just looked up right now. It's a flight to Puerto Rico. It's like, first class, $600. Like, why can't you just give me that flight? Because I didn't know who I was going. Yeah. We're on FaceTime, right, y'all? Sky come out of nowhere in a bikini. In a, <laughs> oh, oh know, we're God. not even in Puerto Rico yet. You we remember that? Bitch, I remember everything. She come, grab the phone out of Bree's hand. Talk about, bitch, it ain't that type of time. <laughs> <laughs> I said... I said, oh, with me? Because we didn't know each other like yeah, that. Yeah, we I didn't. said, oh, with me? It's always a cup of time. Yeah. I don't find nowhere unless it's a first class, right? And she was like, well, then, bitch, <laughs> you don't need to come. <laughs> and I was like, and she gave the phone back to Breeze before I could even say anything. Oh Breeze got a phone and said, I'm sorry, that's my sister. She's just like. <laughs> Why do you sound like him at this point? She's just like that. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care how she like. I don't like that. I'm blocking her, and I'm not going to your birthday no more. So then I, <laughs> so I blocked you, and then when I had unblocked you after Baddie Show, because when we didn't talk about it and we didn't make it a thing, yeah, I was like, I'm not. I'm like, I'm 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 gonna unblock you, and yeah. and I and then we and now and you got me blocked. No, mind you, I'm trying to find T. <laughs> on every freaking platform, even Zeus, Zeus will at, will not at you guys. They will just have y'all music up, and I'm I'm trying to find you on anything. Do you hear me? Yeah. And it's just like user unfound. You can't. Oh. So I'm like, I don't know. Like, how do you do it? Because I am like, I don't have her block, but I know for sure. 
I did it right after you did it. So. By the end of the show, we're gonna have each other unblock because we're gonna I'm gonna grab her fucking phone and we're we gonna will. figure it out. I was fuck yeah. But it realistically, no when we met outside of like that whole thing with like just your like our friends having mutual friends being in the LA scene we've had parties we've got fucked up together we've had good times yeah that's why it was like even a thing for Puerto Rico for us and you were even comfortable enough like bitch we not doing that (laughs) you know what I mean so but no I get it we weren't but we still weren't to the space that Um, we are now yeah you know what I mean so I, I I I'm so happy we are here. Me and too. And I love you, and thank you for having me on your show. Of course. I hot had to get you. with the hottest place to be. Okay, period. Yeah. Ooh. All your fans was like, you got to get Sky in there. We got to know her tea. We got to get the info. So if it's going to be anywhere, it had to be here. I'm happy. This is my first podcast that I've done in a very long time. Really? Oh, my God. Yay. So I'm, so happy I'm happy for to that. Be here yeah. With a fellow Virgo. Me too. And just because we've been through something, not just because you just, <laughs> we, you know how you've been through something with somebody a little yeah. bit. So it's just like I, on different scales, too. We and have a backstory. You keep it fucking. I don't like to say keep it cute. You keep it elite. <laughs> I, keep, I, I keep it real and I keep it cute. I keep I it lit. It. And I feel like. Every Virgo does, to be honest. Like we're a cult, Virgo real nation. bitch, real shit. So, first question of the hot tea: What do you think is the difference between yourself on baddies, on baddies versus Black Ink Crew? I, a, a lot of years, a lot of growth, a lot of healing. <laughs> and on Black Ink, I, I love Black Ink. I love the platform to where I was introduced, and I'm thankful for it. But in the same breath, I left with a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth in regard to just the way I am, my thinking process, even just being angry and reacting because I left I left with a scene, um, a really, a really intimate scene with my son and my youngest son, Dessalines. And that right there, you know, it left a it, it, it was mixed reviews but for the most part it left a crazy taste in people's mouth without me being able to explain my point of view or how I feel about things Mm -hmm. and I love Zeus Mm -hmm. um and I love baddies because I was able to rebrand myself right oh I see it's able to show really where I'm at in life now like versus you know where I was at at Black Ink. I mean, I was in a hurt space. Shit was happening. Real Shit life. happening now, but I'm able to, you know, maneuver in a better way. That's good. Because <laughs> I feel like on Baddies, I really got to know you and your like sure. your to your core. And I think you showed. I do think you showed a deeper side of yourself. I still think you had fun and you was kicking and being a little messy, <laughs> but you still was true to yourself and without yeah. like. All of the anger, like you mentioned. For sure. For yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Just not being impulsive. And with baddies, I was able to see where all the girls was coming from. Like, from mm-hmm. house A to house B. And, you know, house everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Any house. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> like, whatever house you was able to see. Whatever you feel. Yeah. Baby. But I just feel as though amongst the houses and where I went at right now, I was able to show, you know, a sense of peace and a safe space. And I I understood every girl that was in every house. I got it. Mm-hmm. I, I was did. there. I've been there, done it. So it was never a judgmental, you know, point of view. How do you feel about the fans seeing that as you playing both sides? I never listen. I, I love the fans I love supporters I love the haters I love humans and so when it comes to um anyone saying that I'm playing both sides that's their opinion and if that's a-okay with them Mm -hmm. I totally don't know who they are I don't (laughs) 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 with all due respect it's true I really don't I don't know who they are I know how I made the person feel in that moment Mm. I know how I'm feeling today and that's all that I really honestly care about so with the most recent episode everybody kind of has seen you know when Smiley was you know going through her medical issue you know you were there for her 
Mm -hmm. Um, And there was a point in that moment where she was about to look like throw up on you and you pushed her face a little bit to the side. Do you think that when you look back at it, that it was like, oh my God, I wish I wouldn't have did that. Or do you think you did the right thing? I 100% believe that I did the correct thing, and that's protecting myself. I don't want anyone else's bodily fluids on my person. So I'm going to make sure that, I mean, though the mush might look longer than what it was, but if you think about it, if I'm going to the right, if I'm going to the left, and I'm pushing your face so you don't throw up, I'm still keeping your face that way in case you are throwing up. So, I mean, it, it, it was it was respectfully, like, um, Smiley's a good girl. She knows that it wasn't done maliciously. Yeah. Um, I, I care about everyone on the cast, and in that moment, Smiley needed a little bit more care, and it is what it is. But I'm not, my self-preservation is the first thing that comes to mind in anything that I do. 100%. And I was thinking, like, that was the most Virgo thing that you could have ever <laughs> done in that situation. Like, you were there. You was president. You was like, girl, are you okay? I'm here for you. I swear to God, what do you need to do? Drink this water. And as soon as you saw her color, you said, Wait, it was like, what? oh, absolutely not. <laughs> I wasn't there. You know what I mean? I wasn't yeah. in Jamaica, whatever the case was. I would have hoped that Somali wasn't like faking something like this. Yeah. But when I saw what I did see just from the episode, I didn't think that she was faking it. But what is your perspective on the situation? Because you were actually there. And I know... At that moment, I saw someone that was in need, and I'm going to be there to help them if it's in my capacity. Mm-hmm. I, if, if she was faking, I don't... Me, personally, I know what I saw there. Like, So it's just like, I'm not going to debate with anyone about that mm-hmm. because that's a, her health concern, but I know... That was a really crazy time in Jamaica. Like, and mind you, I'm enjoying myself. I'm I'm fucked up at the moment. Right. Everybody was drunk. Looked like they were having a good time finally. You get what I'm saying? (gasps) And and that's the shit that fucked it up because... As I'm drunk I, and I'm trying to care for someone else, it looks like I'm maybe being slightly insensitive, though I'm being there for the person because I'm laughing. That's a human reaction to certain people. Me, personally, I'm a laugh. I, I'm laughing. I can't help it. Shit. I laughed when a nigga had a machete on me when I was fucking 17. I'm, it wasn't What? Funny. That nothing was funny about that, but I know at the end of the day, like everyone has their body reactions. I can't fucking control what just what just happened. Then I got security arguing with me. Wait, that rewind, rewind, rewind. Somebody pulled a machete out on you. How old were you? Like, when did this happen? It happened, and, and I, I, the food smells good. I don't want to talk about it. You want to talk about it? You, <laughs> you bringing up some shit you that bring up. I brought it up, but I didn't like the vote. It was like some shit that you skipped over, like when you skip your toe on a. I, on how a could little, I skip over a somebody a pulling a machete out on my this friend? Mother, uh, yeah, no, it was just. How long was it ago? No, I was like seventeen. Seven, okay, so it was a long time ago. It was ago. a this very a long, long time, time ago. ago, and I would just say if I'm giving suggestions to the young ladies. Don't just go out with your friends and go visit people and see if that's the place to be just because you think it is. Because it was like a house? Anything could happen. I was, I'm from the town. I'm from New York. And, <laughs> you know, anything could happen. And make sure you take care of yourself. Make sure that you good. You should make sure you comfortable anywhere you at. Overall, your experience on baddies mm-hmm. how would you feel about it like versus the beginning to jamaica to the end from beginning to the end my overall experience with baddies from the people that have come and gone and just meeting new energies i was already familiar with mad people already so it's just like i i get to put energies to faces and some people are 
very new to me. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's like Anna, Tzatziki, Camilla. Like, I, I was a fan of Camilla because of what she did in, on BGC. So, I like, but it was so good for them to be in the house with me, for me to become real good with them. You get what I'm saying? And I fuck with them. And they're, they're good people. And I love them. We got a group chat to where we fucking talk about love, our families. I love the energy that it just didn't stay there. And um, let me said that. He said, when y'all leave each other, y'all going to miss each other. Y'all keep saying y'all ready to go home. Mm-hmm, but y'all gonna mm-hmm. miss each other and we was just ready to go home because you you know you're away from your space for so long because working with Zeus was absolutely amazing it's gonna have its ups and downs with anything from in front of the camera to behind the camera but in all actuality I really enjoyed it mm-hmm. like I don't have a bad thing to say about it you they work with what you give them and if you and if they fuck with you they fuck with you if they don't they don't mm-hmm. I don't work with for plenty of white people I love to work for a black company it feels good it feels safe it feels loved I can be energetically myself without feeling like I'm a character mm-hmm. or entertainment for somebody so do you think that your position might be a little bit different than the rest of the girls because you've already had like a reality TV background I feel as though everybody I um it's been people previously that have reality TV backgrounds um it started off with young ladies from Bad Girls Club that was the premise of the show so right. me personally I just feel like my experience is because of how I carry myself mm-hmm. um I carry myself as a beautiful queen and I treat others as such so. yeah and you were very respectful on set to everyone production the girls security you name it like yeah. you were one of the people that I was like oh, I really like how she carries herself in circumstances or just even just with a network in just general, like just with people. I was like, I really... um I really respect that. I yeah. appreciate you of for course, that. Of course, of course. And you already know that shit trickle down. So if you, if your house or your peers see that that it's going to carry in, they going to carry too. So mm-hmm. I love that the house that I was in, they carry very respectfully and kindly to the people. I think that's what from. I think people loved about you most is was that like you were in House B, but you were still cordial with House A. And you, it's not like you had any issues with anybody in House A. Yeah. But now seeing the episodes replay, how do you feel about the House A versus House B? I feel like the versus aspect of it is more so from the fans. I, I feel like it was just one house and another house, and you got to put House A, House B, whatever. I don't know. Like, I, I, I thought that Natalie... Did her thing in her crib. You get what I'm saying? At the end of the day, it's her show. So um, for me to have the opportunity personally to be whatever you want to call it for the house that I was in and be a rock for the house that I was in, to be a light for the house that I was in, that mm-hmm. was good enough for me. That was what I was trying to exude. At the end of the day, I'm trying to show where I'm at in life now. Motherfuckers love me for black ink. Mm-hmm. You gonna love me for where I'm at now or mm-hmm. not? Like, it is what it is. I don't really care. Out of every fight on the baddie season, what do you think is the most entertaining? I Can I do a top three? Sure, yes, of course. Okay. And it's all for different circumstances. So, number three, the fight that I thought that was the most entertaining would have been um, Camilla and Natalie's fight. Okay. I enjoyed that because they, they, <laughs> they were very, you know, they mobile. They moved the fuck around. You hear me? They, 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 they sure did. Around. They moved around that whole club. The motherfuckers moved around. That was one of, that was an entertaining ass fight. Like, cause I had to move too. You get what I'm saying? The tickets <laughs> to my goddamn seat <laughs> had to move just as well with the fight. So I thought that was good. Um, two. Oh, two would be you. And who? You and three, you versus three. Oh, that's, that's just like number two. I know. think two <laughs> is you versus three. T versus three. <laughs> I think it was something to me because you stood on your t- you stood on your two. Like I've been there. I've been jumped. I've been. I, I had to line a bitch up, line bitches up. Like I've been there. So 
And as I'm learning you more and knowing, like, of course you're going to defend yourself, but this is not your background of... I'm getting ready to fight three bitches today, so. Not in that walk of light. You know I'm, what I mean? The, I'm used to fighting bitches that are like myself, suburban hood. Do you understand <laughs> what I'm saying? I fight bitches that are suburban hood. Not hey, just, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 <laughs> it is what it is. You chat, you chat, and you talk, you on talk. on top of that, I had the flu. <laughs> but at, no, but at I the get reunion, what it is. it's going to be different. <laughs> I get it, I get it. Cause I'm a hood hood bitch. Okay. I ain't no suburban hood. A bitch, suburban so hood. You I are hood hood. I stay away from your guy because I, <laughs> I, I be like, why you want to fight though? <laughs> Typically on a normal day, why you me? I fight the suburbans, the elitists, the goddamn baby. I don't give a fuck. But bitch, now y'all don't bitch. give a fuck. Yeah. But no, but I know, but we're not on that. But yeah. at the end of the day, <laughs> I get what you're saying. And um, what's number one? That, number one is, you know, my baby Tzatziki in, in the back of that yard. I hate that it was set up like that, but I love that she was able to defend herself. Like, 100%. I love that. Like, mm hmm as she should. I was like, ooh, I was that I was like at first I didn't like it, but then watching it back, I was like, Oh wow, it was pretty like wow. Yeah. Mm hmm If you had to pick a baddie for them to not bring back, who would it be and why? Of course I was saying don't bring back Vicky. Not that person. What you mean? More like somebody who was like actually on the season because she was only in it for like a couple of episodes so she doesn't really count really? saya and vicky didn't stay like the whole way through you ain't stay either okay Situation. so then whatever don't pick saya me or vicky who else <laughs> i love that <laughs> you're so cool okay um who was on the fucking show <laughs> not who was on the fucking show <laughs> ah, don't bring back Natalie, she's the fucking boss. She don't got to do it. The fuck? I'm going to pick my sis. Don't, like, she's the goddamn boss. She's doing it because she's amazing TV. I think she loves it. No, and she's amazing TV. Natalie is a fucking marketing genius. She knows what she's doing. She's a Capricorn, number two. Okay, yeah, She's that's an true. amazing mother. She knows what she's doing. Everything that she's doing, mm -hmm. it's, it's a plan. So, I mean, I feel like I was... Outside of her, I think all the other girls continuously deserve a chance. You I think also, everybody else should come back? I think Mariah Ling should come back at one point. I think everyone should have their turn to come back at one point. You know how you have a brief hiatus and you come back? I think that's okay, too, but... I think everyone deserves a chance to come back. What the fuck? This is bread and butter. This is money. This is ways to put your brand out. Um, you can grow on this show, you, or you can continue to be angry. You can show who you are on this show, and they're going to fucking show it. And it is what it is. You think Baddies is, like, a place more for, like, people who have already, like, been doing this like us versus, like, somebody who's, like, new? Like, no. Because Anna, she auditioned for the show, she got on the show, and now she's, like, you know, where she's at today. Mm -hmm. So it's, like... Do you think that there should be more girls that come in and audition versus girls that, like, are like us? I feel like it should be a <laughs> sprinkle of girls like us, and I, and I should, I love Anna. Let's start Me off too. There. I do love her too. If I had a daughter, Anna, mm -hmm. and Ivory. <gasps> oh, Ivory from Now That's TV? Yeah. I, I think oh, my that, God. I think that they're two awesome young ladies. I was DM'd Ivory, and I think that she's an amazing human being, and I think that, Anna is an amazing human being. My mom was small like her. Mm. So I don't you did know mention why. that. Yeah, on the my show. mom was mm -hmm. very little like her. So I don't know the way she stand up for herself. I, I love that shit. Yeah, I do like, too. Shit. I love that you said that you would if you had two daughters, it would be Ivory and it would be Anna. Because you mm -hmm. do have two kids. You mm -hmm. have sons. But one of your sons, Genesis, he posted, yes, posted, he a, posted picture a picture with you and him. And I wanted to know, like, how you felt about that and where you left off on with also with, like, the Black Ink crew. Like, how you think they felt. I, I have two sons, and I mm -hmm. love both of my boys. Um, we going to go through our ups and downs as humans will. And it is what it is. But outside of that, like being able to take a picture with one of my kids is amazing to me. I cherish every moment. I watch them when they eat. 
So it's just like the little things that um, when your mother cherishes, oh, my, my daughter did her first step. My son just ate his first meal. I, I, do, I feel the same way when I'm with my boys, whenever I get to spend time with them. That's nice. And as they're growing into young men, I'm a, a happy to be able to experience the moments with them. I love that. And they fine as hell, both of them. So, <laughs> them jeans is exuding, baby. Both of them look good. You crazy. <laughs> Ain't no more um, tequila. Oh, we sure have more tequila. I'm having such a good time, man. Okay, good. It's such a good vibration. Good. I love the wall art. Thank you. I've seen you in different settings, for mm -hmm. sure. Just to see you in this setting right here, I think it's pretty amazing. Oh, thank you. To see you not only in your boss energy, but in your soft energy. Because it's still a soft girl life to mm -hmm. where you're in a safe space. Mm -hmm. And you're around people that care about you and just want to support you. So continue to thrive in that. And thank you for inviting me. Of course. Because I was a little nervous, and I'm, I still am. It's still more time to be nervous. We got <laughs> we got a long time to go. You don't have to be so. nervous. Just how you have expressed about me, like, feeling like I'm in my boss energy and in my soft girl energy, I feel like that's I'm what I'm seeing from you. So don't be afraid to or nervous to be in that energy because – I love you. I really do. Like, I think I you're amazing. You like, thank you. I've Don't always make thought my you were eyes amazing. spicy. I loved it. What Don't was that? Make my eyes spicy. She about to make a Wait, bitch no, cry. No, but what was that? Waiting. What was that one scene that you had on Black Recruit when that girl was like, "I feel like you're jealous of me." You went, <laughs> <laughs> bro, you laughed in that whole face. No, that shit is forever a meme. Forever. <laughs> you, you understand what that? I'm saying? Like, you are iconic. I love it. Yeah, thank I love you. It. I wanted to know because this is like TTT. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Shut up. up. For this. Oh gosh. How do you feel about public relationships that are, you know, intimate relationships? Well, my last truly public relationship was with um, Six Hundred Breezy, mm -hmm. and that was like back in 2018. So. And he's a good guy. He's a good friend of mine um, to this day. But we went through our trials. And what I learned from that, because I like to take accountability in anything that I got going on, is, you know, I like to keep my things a little more private. And with that, I just got out of a relationship. We were together for a year and a half. With and someone else. With someone else mm -hmm. um, recently. And we broke up while I was filming. Yeah, I actually spoke about him in the beginning of filming. Like, oh, he put a ring on it. I was so proud of this relationship. I saw that. And I'm still proud of the relationship, even though it, I don't want to say necessarily failed, but even though it didn't go the way I wanted it to go, I'm so happy from what I learned from it because on some G shit, I know that I learned so much from this man. He was a good man and... I appreciate him, and I was a good woman and to him, and I appreciate the times that we had with one another. We grew apart, and shit happens. Are you able to elaborate on, like, why you feel like it didn't happen the way that you would have wanted it to happen? Personally, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm always going to love him. You want to be respectful, I just want to be respectful. Yeah, because you still have respect for them, and, and honestly... Not a lot of women can say that. So he should be appreciative <laughs> because there's a, little, there's a lot of women that have dated a lot of men. Yeah, for And sure. they don't have anything respectful to say about them. No, for so sure. So I do commend you for that. Do you feel like you have also the same respect for 600 Breezy? 600 Breezy, I will always have respect for him. He's been so kind to me. He's never been rude to me. Um, we left off... Um, respectfully even though it was kind of hard with you know when you break up and when someone moves on pr probably a little quicker than you do um it'll fuck you up a little bit so I don't think that me personally um I have nothing against him he's mm -hmm. such an amazing man amazing son um, his mother is a beautiful lady. Like, I've, I have good memories, more good than bad. I just feel as though what I learned from that, because I take accountability in anything that I do, is just keep your things a little more private. 
Right. And um, take your time because Breezy and I were like um, a, a love song, like on the run. Like we met each other, we knew, and we went. And and that's the way love could be sometimes. It's fun. But as quick as it goes up, it could go down. Oh, that's a word. Are you dating anybody now? I'm living. I'm living. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Living is dating. I mean, Babe, unless I'm you're living. just living, you know, you're 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 like, you know, you're in your feminine, you're just like, it's all about me. Or are you, you know, are you dating? Are you are you interested? Are you looking at people? Are you looking I'm, at someone <laughs> particular? Oh, <laughs> your friends you over here looking funny. crazy. Look at everybody <laughs> over like, here looking real weird funny. and laughing. The three. <laughs> okay, so um, personally, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I left for filming on August 4th, and I broke up with my past relationship September 4th. Exactly. Wow. wow. A month later. 44. And. No, I'm still residing in my energy. I haven't been intimate with anyone since. I know you had told me that personally. Yeah. Now, and, and I commend you for that. I wouldn't have wanted to say it. You, you that, you that girl. I, yo, you are that fucking girl. What are you trying to say, pretty face? And, and like, you just are so well rounded. Oh, and thank you. You just know. I can't explain it, like, but I can. I can't explain it. You are very respectful, and you know when to work. You know how to do your job properly, and you know how to do well for yourself. I want to commend you for that. Thank you. Just because I think it's a really awesome trait to have, and I really enjoy working with you. Likewise. That's the reason why I came here, because I enjoy it. Because I feel like <laughs> we built a trust without even having to put each other through anything as far as like a hazing. But once I knew, saw certain things within you on a per, on the outside of things, I was like, oh, that's a real one. Oh, all right. I got her. And, and same for me with you. Mm -hmm. There was a moment we had. It was a very intimate moment. There was no cameras around. It was just me and you in a short little room. And... We talked for about we talked. 12 minutes. I wouldn't even give it 15, it but a good. little over 10. It was a good moment. But it was a good moment. Yeah. And it's a moment that I would hold dearly and I wouldn't forget. Of and course. since then, I consider you a real one. Of course. And I love Likewise. you for it. Same. Yeah. Same. And same. so same. nobody can say anything about you to me. Same. And it's, it just is what it is. Like, I respect you. Like, and I've seen you without even knowing you just on your growth on TV and just, you know, even the personal conversations that we've had on the yeah, phone. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, you're so I think consistent you're amazing. Within your, within your brand. And Thank within you. Within your thought process and within your art. I think that's so fucking amazing to witness. Whew, girl, I try. And you look good doing it. Hold up. Wait a minute. We are going to dive deep into the world of Happy Vibes and their incredible range of wellness products. Trust me, you're going to love this. Let's kick things off with Happy Vibes Nootropics, Smarties, and Boost Bites. These aren't your average snacks, y'all. Packed with brain-boosting ingredients, Smarties are your go-to for enhanced focus and mental clarity. Perfect for these days when your brain needs that extra edge. For the moments that you need a burst of energy, Boost Bites gonna have your back. These are ideal for powering through your day the happy vibe way, okay? Now let's talk about these beauties. It's Funny Mush and Party Poppers. Made from Amanita mushrooms, these gummies are all about grounding and euphoric vibes without the trip. That's right. They're crafted to elevate your mood and enhance your wellness experience in the most delightful way. And before you ask, no, they're not gonna make you trip out. These are all about embracing the good vibes, enjoying the moment, and still staying grounded all at the same time. There's more. Happy Vibes CBD line, including the D10 Creative and Energetic. It's perfect for those seeking a creative boost and a serene energy flow. 
All of these amazing products are for those that are 21 and up. Don't be playing. And don't worry, they're coming to your local smoke shop near you. But you can still shop now at happyvibes.life. Don't forget to use my discount code though, hot tea. Tag happyvibes.life and myself on social media with your Happy Vibes gummies for a chance to win a gummies bundle giveaway. But let's get back to the show. Okay, so I wanted to I want to get back into so Black Ink. The the company behind Black Ink crew was Viacom. Yeah, yeah. Did they have, like, a nasty taste in their mouth after you left the show? Or were they, like, still open to working with you? They've definitely reached out mm -hmm. for me to come back and um, work with VH1 um, with the Black Ink Crew show. Outside of that, um, I worked at Macy's, right? Before I worked at Black Ink, I did makeup. Wow. And I'm so thankful for being able to learn how to do makeup and go to school for it and have the jobs that I've had. Big shout out to Impulse Beauty um, and uh, Macy's on 34th Street and in Flatbush. That's crazy. We love you, period. But I've worked at both. And outside of that, I just want to um, say I would never go back and work there. Right, 100%. Right, right. Uh, in the same <laughs> breath, I would never go back and work at Black Ink. Oh, I love so, that. I just It's just about growth and elevation. I did a lot of seasons with Black Ink. I grew there. I got to, I was able to be known there, and I was able to make some money. Well, Fuck out right. of here. At the end of the day, I was it's able about to the make some money. I was able to uh, exude my lifestyle. I'm still the highest followed cast member from that show till this day you're so, the biggest one from the show that i personally know that's not shade to anybody else that i don't know from that show but you you're no, the one that the i know God, from that show i've been put on and um and the people from that show that i love and i appreciate and i respect my brother caesar Caesar put me, I, I've slept in his fucking shop when shit got hard. Yeah. So at the end of the day, that's my brother. Like, whatever right. he got going on, I'm always going to support him. That's my family. Whoever else that was on the show that was able to be a part of my history, I appreciate them. I love Donna. It's still a love and respect with people that I worked with, from Sassy to Puma to, like, I, I, I still got some love for them motherfuckers. But right not Ra Lee, right? Because, like, y'all fought two times. Ra Lee, she's a human being just like I am. We were in a space where we were at the time that we were. And I feel like um, we're grown. And... I exude nothing but love and light to anyone that um, I've crossed paths with, whether it be in a, in a sour way or in an amazing way. Like, we both had two different spaces in our lives, even now. And um, I wish her nothing but success and love and whatever it is. Have you guys bummed into each other since the show no since the show yeah that's when the shit happened at diddy's house right and um i thought that she was going to hug me <laughs> but outside of that um no we haven't bumped into each other she did um suffer from a medical mishap in the midst of that i reached out to her okay um i just said something really kindly to her just with my heart led and um she thanked me and that was where we left that at. And I feel as though that was where we were. And I love that. It was, a, it was a kind, safe space. So there's no more, it. like, issues. Like, you guys have both grew from that. I, I've grown. Right. I can't speak for anyone else. Mm -hmm. And um, the way she reacted to me wasn't where we were. So I feel like there is growth there. She's a mother. She's Right. She's a wife, like, so I feel as though I'm going to give credit to where it's due from what I see on the surface. I don't know anything that's happening personally. I just know me personally, um, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm good wherever Because Virgos, realistically, like, once we're done, we just be like, mm, we don't care no more. Yeah, I'm Like, we be like, okay, we did it. Yeah, we're good now. Yeah, yeah you, you just feel like you good, but I'm always on point. Exactly. Like, You're always ready for it. Yeah. Is there one sign that you're like, I do not fuck with? One sign, romantically or just like at all? Both, romantically and like friendship-wise, like generally. 
romantically, no, I'll be scorned if I say this sign, so I'm not going to say it. I need more time. <laughs> okay. Um, But I know just knowing Gemini's, I'm good with friends. Okay. On a female yeah. level and a male level. Friends, we can be besties. Mm-hmm. I love Gemini's, but as friends. But um, a sign that I can't, like, deal with at all, like, ugh. Romantically, is Gemini's, but, it, like, I mean... Sag women, because I'm a Sag rising. Sag women, I understand them, but they're very insensitive women. (laughs) They're so, and they mean good. Them girls mean good as fuck, and they are insensitive as hell, but they will make sure you're good by being rude as shit. (gasps) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's where I'm at. (laughs) Because you're, because as Virgos, would you say that we are a little bit emotional, just a little bit? I'd like to, my de- my <laughs> defense would like to say, like, bitch, I'm not emotional. Like, what? Like, but I know that I am if I'm willing to cut you off because you said something that I ain't like. So right. At the end of the day, I might, I, I can be a little emotional alongside being very detached. It's a balance. It's a very But I think that's balance. what the... Mother of Earth sign is, honey. We're the only sign. We're the only zodiac ruled by a human. Everyone else is ruled like by an animal. Animal. We're, we're, that's we're really we a connect. woman. We're the birthing woman. We're yeah. like yin and yang. It's we amazing. <laughs> okay. Being emotional, I feel like a lot of the times, and being a Virgo, like we can get our way out of certain situations, even if it doesn't even have anything to do with us. Mm-hmm. But have you ever think that like maybe you have faked emotion to get out of a situation like faked cry to be like no this is not what we're doing no you know i mean probably i don't know i (laughs) see i I feel like when i'm in my right mind i can control any situation as a virgo like i can control anything that's happening like in my right and when i say in my right mind it doesn't necessarily mean whether i'm sober or not it means if i'm not living with an emotion or not moving impulsively and even though I might me not moving impulsively doesn't necessarily mean like oh I'm going cuss your ass out but I gotta fix my face I gotta fix my body language like because bitch I'll be quiet but you still know like I'm feeling some type of way yeah so. you'll fake the funk a little bit yeah, yeah. Like, but I don't really like to use the word fake, fake. because you yeah. gotta be politically correct they need right. this day and age my right can't know what my left is doing so I'm always gonna move in a in an enigma in, in an enigmatic sense. In like, enigmatic sense is wild. I've never heard you that You understand world. where I'm No, because I was going to say, you keeping it real P, like you got that ism on you, you know what I'm saying? But when you said enigmatic, that gave me a whole new, like... You get what I'm saying? Oh, I like that. It's yeah. It's like, it's just like, I'm here, but I'm... I'm <laughs> now you see me, now you don't. Oh, I got, I got something for you. Has anybody ever stole from you? Yeah. How did you react? N- n- not everybody can come to my house now. It's really because hard to of get that to my situation. House. What happened? Yeah, it was a young lady I went to school with, Latoya. Bitch, you remember when I ran up on you in the train station? It is what it is. Beat you up right in front of the police. That bitch steals. Don't be around her. <laughs> um, you, I love it. Call her out, ass bitch. She took something from me while I just got my job at Macy's. And I was so excited about it. And you know when you let your girl sleep over at your house? Yeah. So I had to go to work the next day. I let her sleep over. I wake up the next day. I go to work. I come home. My motherfucking shoes is missing. My money missing out the safe. And I was just like, all right. I say to her, like, yo, what's up? Say something to her. And she's like, I don't know what you're talking about and all this other shit. Bitch. Yeah, and her and I had just connected, but we went to school together, Damn. so that was the vibe. And I was my feelings was really hurt, yeah. but it I had to learn where, like as a Virgo, we like to see what we could have did something different in the situation, been better. been better. So in that situation, and I never left. Like I'll leave people in my house, but if you're able to get in my house, that's that's wild anyway. 
Okay, like, I, wherever I live, you can't even get around my man. Like, I'm, I'm not even that type of girl. Girl, I love it. You want click, click, lock down. I got girls here that are vouch for that. It's hard. I love the space that you're in. You're in such this, like, good mental space. Like, what do you think, like, got you to this place that you're at now? A lot of time, and um, not necessarily just space with myself, was, but space with good people but i needed some time to myself um when i left black ink i didn't get fired i quit my contract was about to be up anyway that season so i was gonna have to renew it so i just quit i quit like november sign i remember that and it was right after a scene with my son and i let them go with the narrative that they fired me because or i was suspended or some shit like right. that right oh wow i never um challenged it because just me being even where I was at then to where I'm at now, I didn't give a fuck. Like, I feel like whatever I want, I can get. If I wanted to be on Black Ink right now, I can be on Black Ink right now. The show is doing terrible. And, and not doing, not saying anything bad about the individuals on the show. But no, of course not. Yeah. It is what it is. You can look at the ratings from the show from when I was there to where I to where it was as soon as I left to where it's at now. It's almost like a pop-up show. You get what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you have to get with the times. We're with streaming now. And I love working for a black-owned network. I, I, I love the give and the take that comes with it. I, I'm not saying that everything is hunky-dory with Zeus. You get what I'm saying? I'm not one of them bitches. But I am saying that I'd rather work for a black king that respects my opinion and my emotions when they go like a roller coaster because his does as well we yeah, he's are still a in human. the same we're human mm -hmm. you get what i'm saying i'd rather deal with someone that hears me out versus someone that shuts me up just to pay me if you look i was the highest paid outside of caesar on this show and I'm thankful for that. But in the same breath, I was acting a fucking fool. And all money ain't good money. But where I'm coming from in that space, bitch, I'm going to do it. What the yeah. fuck? Oh, babe, your father um is an actor. Bitch, you dealing with an actor father. You All you got to do is give me a beat. I'm going to make it work. What do you think the hardest part was for you within finding your peace? The hardest part for me was finding peace within myself and finding peace within my relationship with my sons. Because at that point, I felt like they fucked up what I worked hard for. And I blamed it on them when I should have just thought about where I was coming up from. Like, I love my sons. Like, I, at the end of the day, I gave them up for adoption because I loved my sons. I put them in a space to where... Because it was a lot of argument whether they were adopted or not. I know I came home from jail. And they was in a space to where they were safe. And they had a male and female figure. And they, them niggas wasn't touching them. They wasn't beating them. They wasn't doing nothing. They was willing to keep my boys together. I'm going to fuck with you. I, I, the first time I met them, I came home from jail. I was 19. My mother was in and out of a fucking shelter. Okay? My mother was in and out of a shelter dealing with bipolar disorder at the time. And just being diagnosed with it, mind you, she's dealt with drug abuse previously in her life. And I've always, at that time, been a scammer so and drug dealing. So that's what I was doing and gangbanging. At that time, that's where I was. And I came home from jail at 19. And I saw my sons in a space together with... They with the fucking initials in the in the pool, and they keeping them together, and they got other adopted they kept kids them together. I'm like, oh, I fuck with these people, right? And I, I'm always mess with Candace and David Raymond. Like they are good people, they are yeah. amazing people, and they were good to my children, even when my children were being wild style vagabonds to them, rude, mm -hmm. rude vagabonds. Yeah. Now, with the relationships that you have with them now, you're in a different space than how it first begun. Like when you first became a mother, when you had to give them up for adoption, you're in a different space with yeah, them now. Yeah, of course. I'm in a different space with them at this point because I've grown and the hurt has been a lot of therapy, a lot of changes, a lot of vibrations that had to be 
fucking cleansed and figured out. But outside of that, you know, we still human. I'm still going through shit with them, but it's in a space to where I can talk to them now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, at that point, we were just so angry. I was angry. They talking. They saying some shit I don't like. I'm angry. I'm standing up. When I know if I'm talking to my mother and I'm saying some shit she don't like, she ain't trying to stand up on me. Right. So I got to figure it out. That's why I had to find that peace within myself. It took a lot of hikes mm -hmm. and a lot of masturbating. Oh. She said, y'all had to release that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it because <laughs> there was a lot of things that I was, like, not willing to forgive my parents for. And, I mean, I didn't have to go through like an adoption phase or situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But seeing the scene that I did see on Black Ink Crew with you and your son when he was sitting at the, the restaurant with you at the table, mm. a lot of it reminded oh, don't make me, me. cry, girl. I'm sorry. I don't want to make you cry. It just reminded did me. Did it trigger some stuff with you? It reminded me of how my mom was pleading with me as a child. Okay. And trying to get my forgiveness and my understanding. But at the same time being like, what the fuck? You know mm. what I mean? Like not understanding like how I couldn't understand where she was coming from. Mm, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was seeing that scene and being like, I know that that was like a thing that I took and put in my pocket along with like the other things that I had for my mom. And being like, okay, yeah, she, she's not, she's a human too. Boom. That meant a lot. That means a lot, even hearing that now. I think a lot of people felt that way. And even more depths of ways because yeah. their situation might even be more familiar. So to know now that the situation is coming to a place where you can converse. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Brings hope to people and like clarity that they're headed in the right place maybe with their parents or their sure. mother. So I do commend you for that. And I know... Like, it's not easy, and I know it's, you, you know, so I know much. it's, yeah. I love no, you. No, that means a lot to yeah. me. Thank you so much. Of course. And I, I don't know. I just think that, like, now, too, like, not being a mother, mm -hmm. I look at situations like yours or, like, my mother's or just other people that I'm very close to that yeah, have also sure. been in your circumstance. And I'd be like, you know, I, I, you know, I, ha I have to be intentional. Yeah. I have sure. to be intentional when I have kids because, you know, I want to make sure that they don't have the same traumas, you know, that mm -hmm. I had or, or that you okay had with or them my mother having had. traumas because they're going to come. They're going to come anyway. Because outside of that, mm -hmm. I love that you express that. Mm -hmm. And I love that um, you are willing to thank you, for, first of all, for giving me those flowers and giving me that love. Because when you're going through it, it's a little tougher because in the same... So my thing with children has always been, I, I love children. I, I want to have more children. Um, but in the same breath, I never had more children in the midst of my kids because I wanted to meet them and I didn't want them to think that I raised another family right oh I, wow so that's why that you was didn't the have, reason wow. why I've never had other children outside of that I understand with not wanting them, them to have the same traumas that you have but also understanding that they're going to have some traumas and I feel as though with my sons even with that situation with black ink and me tr pleading with him he beat up the whole security and in the same breath and wanted to fight me. Who? My son. Oh, Genesis yeah. Genesis yeah. that, on that scene. But in the same breath, a mother's love, you don't want to see your son fighting. And you're like, don't touch my son. You were pleading. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and so I, like, my catch-22 has always been with my next chapter in life is that love that you exude for your children is so deep that you will fucking jump in front of a truck for your kids. And I only got a taste of that in that moment. And I was just more so almost confused to 
a sense to where I'm like, what is this feeling that I'm feeling to where I'm willing to put myself in harm's way? And that's probably also been a part of my mindset moving forward with how I move forward with my family and who I date and who I'm dating. It's always on the forefront because I have athletic boys, so they always want to have kids with me. <laughs> She said they all want to get me pregnant. But I wanted to ask you, what is on your vision board for the future? Huh. I don't want to give all the secrets. But of course, um, there are definitely different categories from finances to love to spirituality to just career in general. And my family dynamic and my family dynamic is a big part of what I'm focusing on this year is just to be more involved. Like, I don't like a lot of people in my family. <laughs> oh, gosh. But I know I'm at a space to where you have to deal with it to a degree. Right. And even if it's for, like, 48 hours, I want those moments. I want those memories, and I want to reminisce more. So, I mean, of course, I have monetary shit on my vision board from a new home to a new car, shit like that. Right. But outside of that, I want to do more things with my mother. I, I pray that my mother finds her husband, her king. Mm. Um, it's just, like, a lot of prayers for outside figures that are close to me because I get a lot of love from the outside, and that's what is my foundation so if they're happy i'm happier i love that because it is about your village yeah at the end of the day like yeah you're a mother but you're still a baby to somebody for sure, you're your for mommy's sure. baby so you want to really build that connection and break that that generational you know that, that generational, generational trauma curse. and that generational curse yes with your mother because then so forth it'll come on to you with your children mm -hmm. so it's all about you know what, like, you're spiritual like me, you very, know? Very. Like, it's, you know, it's like, it has a lot to do with our womb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have um, a book I'm reading right now. It's called Sacred Woman. Okay, I want to read it. Yes. I'll, Let's I'll, do a book club. I would love a book club. I would love a book club. Would it's you guys like school. a book club? Let's do it. T and I are doing a book club. Pretty girls. Have you read it? You've dabbled and dabbled in it. Okay, great. Can I ask you a question before the night is over? Let's go. Oh, right on. Go ahead. I have three questions. Oh, wow. What did you think about your experience with Baddies East? I think that my experience could have been better, personally. Okay. Like, I think that they are a new company, you know, so I respect that. And also, of course, I love that they're black owned. And I respect everybody that's been, that is on the network, that works at the network. Um, but I do think that there was some things that maybe I wasn't personally aware of because I was new to reality TV. So it was like kind of like a shock to me. And, you know, so I feel like I really can't personally like say like what my experience was like. Because, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when you like have sex with somebody for the first time. And then you're like, huh, I need another time. I need another time. And then another time it's like, oh, wow. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, that could have happened. I was supposed to be on Bad and Wild, but mm -hmm. the terms we couldn't work out. So now it's just like, you know, at a point where it's like, okay, if we run it back, if we do it again, it does have to be on the terms that I'm comfortable with. So then I could have... A good experience. Do you feel that you were comparing it to a set of sorts? Because what I know you from personally is working on movie sets when you do work on screen or if you're not doing your content. So do you feel like um, you were comparing more so to that? Because I'm coming from a um, reality TV background. So if I'm comparing it to that, they're amazing. Like when I say amazing chef's kits do you feel personally because i know it's a big not even big a huge difference between movie sets and reality tv dynamic do you feel like you were doing that comparison it wasn't the production it wasn't the lights it wasn't the cameras you know it was like the professionalism with like the producers like 
I didn't ever have a problem with a director on a movie. I've never had a problem with a producer on a commercial. The producers are whispering in this girl's ear. The producers are whispering in that girl's ear. And that's why I say, like... That's why I'm used to. The reality TV of that perspective is... That's why I was... And I think even... That's why you've never seen me with nails on while we filmed. Of course, I'm going to be Yeah, you didn't have nails on. You've never seen me with nails on while we filmed. And Natalie had mentioned, you know, I don't think that you're used to reality TV. And of course I wasn't. I've never dealt with that before. A lot of the time on the show, I was trying to... Make sure that I was protecting my brand. Got you. And you acknowledge that mm -hmm. you weren't familiar with the, um, reality TV. I don't know. I don't know if you remember the scene we had while we were in the Sprinter, and we were just acknowledging that we had some familiar friends with one another. But outside of that, you were just like, "Hey, this is my first time within the reality TV field, but I've done other work." And I think the other girls understood what you were saying, but I think it was also coming from a space where when I look at the Zeus young ladies, I remember me when I started off at VH1. So when you're saying anything to me within scene, I'm going to listen, but I'm also going to listen to what I'm supposed to do first. If I'm supposed to punch you in your face by the <gasps> end of the scene, and mind you, a producer is not telling you that at Zeus. But if they're telling you they want more, you personally determine what more is. That's up to you. No one at Zeus has ever said, Scott, go in there and fight this scene. And that's what I truly appreciated because I've worked at previous companies to where that was my dynamic. They now, said to, for you to fight. You know, just like cause a scene fight keep it going and and I've worked again on several different networks so I'm not putting it on anyone's network but what I'm saying is what I loved working at Zeus outside of the bullshit because if I'm coming from a movie perspective with um the dynamic that comes with reality tv I would be fucking flabbergasted too like what's happening what's next what the fuck's what but so you understood more i understood it more and i appreciated it more just because everything i truly appreciated working with that network just because it was really giving they can you can work with what they give you they're going to be able to edit cut do whatever with what you give them 100 percent. that's what i yeah that's always been my philosophy but with other networks, it's always, some things have been super produced mm -hmm. to where it's like, make something happen for this scene. Yeah. Even if that's not what you're hired for. Yeah. Right. And I think like with my situation, like, although I do have love for the network and I think that the network is great, I think that there's a lot of growth that still needs to be obtained. And I do appreciate what the network did for me. Mm -hmm. And they know that. You know, but they know that at the end of the day, I'm not going to fake the funk and I'm going to keep it real with them, yeah, you know, yeah. and let mm -hmm. them know, like, this is what I don't think y'all should be doing. This is what I think y'all could be doing better at, you know, and if you don't want it, then that's fine. That's cool. Like, if you don't want to hire me, that's fine. That's cool. Yeah. But like, at the end of the day, it's not like. I, I'm like, I hate y'all. Fuck Zeus. It's not. Yeah, it's no, not that. I've never even seen you. It's even just like more so like Zeus. do better. Yeah. And I ex and I would expect that from anybody in my life. Period. No, for sure. Yeah. You're not saying anything mm -hmm. wrong, uh, mm -hmm. especially for the expectations that you put for yourself. And I feel as though that's granted mm -hmm. and you're not doing or saying anything wrong for what works for you and mm -hmm. within your capacity. Me personally, when I'm working on a movie set, I know what to expect there. Mm -hmm. When I'm working on a reality set, I know what to expect there. It's going to be a give and a take with any... 100%. Fucking one, if the fucking script isn't written in stone. Mm -hmm. We're always improv We're always loving. We're always exuding our true and main character. Mm -hmm. And we're always fucking on point. And I think that I know now. You know, now I know. That's Which is why I was like... I think I, I need that. a rerun. I love Even that. if it's not with Zeus, but like reality TV. 
to even get more in depth with like showing my true character, mm -hmm. you know, and making sure that I'm like, instead of being so worried about the brand, the brand, the brand, like it's more so also like real shit too, you know, yeah, no, like for sure. Mm -hmm. Just people want us to be a part of the space. Yeah. We've had our conversations, uh, you know, before and you know, we can all isolate mm -hmm. or we can be a part of it. Yeah. But I had such a good time and I had a good time on this fucking show. Like, yeah, I wasn't expecting for us to dig so fucking deep. I know people think that hot tea is like literally just gossip and like hot tea, but it's also like real conversation, yeah. deep and genuine. Like it's real like it's real empathetic here, too. Who did you gravitate most to while you were on the show when you did get some time with them? Like on the show or after? It could be both. I mean, I think everybody in House B, except for Smiley. Okay. Um, but yeah, like with in the when we were in the house, though, really like you, Camilla, and Tasiki. Okay. So those were like my main like girls that I really liked, and then after the show, I started liking Anna, and me and Biggie started connecting nice. too. Nice. You know. Nice. I love so, that. Yeah, I really liked the girls. You and Biggie beer. should do a collab. She does a thing with her teddy bears. I know. She was supposed to come out. But she, she didn't. She bring didn't. her teddy bear with her. I know. I told her. I was like, bring your teddy bear. She was like, I don't know, bro. I don't know if he's yeah. going to fit. Ah, that sounds like my baby. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to fit, bro. Like, <laughs> should I take the stuffing out and then pack him? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that sounds like I'm like, baby. no. I think you should just stuff him in a huge suitcase <laughs> <laughs> and try to make him a carry-on. She's like, he's fucking big as shit, bro. I don't think he's going to make it. I'll have to give him a seat, <laughs> She's bro. Like, I think I got to go out there. <laughs> No, but that that's neither perfect. here nor there. Do you have any plans for the reunion? Because I heard you saying some stuff on live. You know what the fans want to know. No, I'm excited about the reunion. Again, um, I'm not getting caught up in anybody's beefs from okay. previously. That's not my thing. That's why um, I want to clarify. Like, even on my live when I was, like, from the girls that were in the house from the beginning. Again, I'm not, I'm not mixed up in any beefs. Like, as long as you don't speak about Tommy... I don't give a fuck about none of that because she was on their previous season. Right. She's not there to defend herself, mm -hmm. and I'm here to defend her. So I, as long as you don't speak about her mm -hmm. and allow her to defend herself if you need to, and as long as you don't speak about, as far as me, because I've been nothing but kind to anyone. So if you're not putting a name on it, I really don't care. And when you do put a name on it, depending on how I'm feeling that day, so the, I'm going to address it. So the plan is basically, though, sit pretty. If someone addresses you, address it back. That's the way I've been the entire season. I agree. Yeah, for sure. Everyone loves your face card, girl. Don't decline. Okay, so, yeah. we're gonna. this is the last part of my show. This is the part the where we... Part. Ah, ah, ah. I haven't had... Tea tips. This is where the teacups ask for advice. And we answer their questions. This teacup said, my girlfriend wants me to freeze her period blood and make a popsicle and eat it. What do you think? Well, evidently you're into stuff like that, which is nothing wrong with it. Just go for it and try it. Even if you do <laughs> She's one like, lick. go for it, try it. I mean, yeah, if that's what your kink is, if you're into that, do what you want to do. She didn't pull it out of her ass, babe. That's what you guys think. But also, if you're not into it, don't do something that you're not comfortable with. And maybe you should, like, also get her tested first before you do that. I don't know it might be, like, yeah, for sure. dramatic, but, like, you should get them tested. For um, sure. This teacup said, how do you get into the influencer world when you live in a boring-ass town? You got to make it lit. <laughs> you are the entertainment. That's the whole point of the influencer world. When I say make it lit, don't go doing anything stupid, but within your capacity or whatever your town got going, make it fucking go. Like, th make that thrive. Build light on that because, trust you me, there's always someone else that's going through whatever it is that you're going through, and they might be in a small town or a big one. I like that. And, and that's really it. Yeah, that's a good advice as well. I, I like that because I'll be like, just move. <laughs> but not everybody can move. And you're right. You should make it lit where you're at. Like, and you can. Like, everybody got a phone. You do something viral. Like, yeah. whatever it is in the process of, like, your passion or your goals and career. And then you post you it. You so pretty when you talk. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, yes. last one. They want to know what is your makeup routine? OMG, follow my YouTube so I can show you and get paid for it too. <laughs> okay, her, her link will be in the description. Yeah, for sure. But I'll show you all my, my skin routine and my YouTube routine. Yeah, you have great skin. As far as it comes to my makeup and yeah and i also have a skincare coming out yes. like a nice cream for the winter and a nice oil a light based oil for the summer period we love that i'm always like very quick like you know the skincare routine then the primer then the yeah. foundation i think or even just skip the foundation just go straight to concealer depending on how i feel a little blush yeah. uh, or a contour or contour first yeah. then blush then boop, 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 and then t highlighter and then I do my eyebrows even though people a lot of people do their eyebrows first. do you do your eyebrows first I do my eyebrows first Are I, I need to get better at that I prefer concealer more concealer. than foundation mm -hmm. but like damn I, I'm trying to get better at doing the eyebrows first because I think they look better when you do it first and versus the end okay so I'll shape my eyebrows in the beginning but mm -hmm. Towards the end, that's when I'll do the cleanup. Like, I'm gonna oh. my brow gel and make sure I like fill in a little more if the um, powder or anything's got in. Right. And then the end is mascara, lip liner, lip. Period. Period. And a little spray. Spray. Period. A lot of spray. Yes, a um, lot of spray because I want to be shit. A lot of spray. <laughs> <laughs> and you look damn good setting it up, okay? Thank I you. love you. You're so set. You're so I late. You. You're so beautiful. I really love that you came on hot Thank tea. You for to me. The hottest place to be. Yes, the hottest place to be, baby. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. Look at the description. Right now. Do it. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Love you. Bye. Hot tea.